I'll show you how to install the pool skim in your pool with various different configurations. And the pool skim comes with all the parts you need to install it to your return line. Comes with two different return fittings. Comes with elbows and some straight pipe. So if you have one and a half inch threaded return jets, it's perfect for the pool skim. You're going to need a rubber mallet and a screwdriver. You're going to use this to kind of tap the thing that's holding the eyeball to get it out. Sometimes it's calcified from being in the water for years. You just take the screwdriver, wedge it here, hit it counterclockwise with the rubber mallet. Tap. Your pool might also have one and a half inch return lines, but it may have a fitting on top of the threaded part like this here. Very simple, you just need a pair of channel locks. You now you want to carefully turn it counterclockwise. Just pull it right out like that. So if you're installing the pool skim in a pool with just a stub pipe like this here with no threads, you can do so on an adapter that you can add to it that has threads on it that you can thread the pool skim into. So in the case of snub pipes, in order to hook it up, you're going to need the Polaris pipe connector kit. This right here is a one inch snub pipe connector. You see it has a one and a half inch threaded part here. And it threads right into the pool skim adapter, no problem. And this end will actually go into the wall and then you'll compress it in by twisting it. And I suggest you put Teflon tape in all the threaded fittings in case you want to remove the pool skim later. It's easy to get off. And with the hat removed, you want to make sure that the pool skim is about two to two and a half inches below the water level. That right there is good. When you install the pool skim, turn the elbow so that the bag will be sitting out at an angle like this here from the wall. I think in this case, I'm going to put an elbow here. And I'm going to go ahead and insert the pipe like this. I'm going to go ahead and put the other standard elbow here like this. In rare occasions, your return jet may be really low in your pool. In that case, you may need a longer piece of pipe. On the manufacturer's website, they have them available. I'm going to go ahead and attach it, and I'll get it to the pool level. Simply thread in the male adapter where the return jet was. Okay, I'll take the pool skim. I'm going to go ahead and stick this elbow here on this adapter. Okay, so this is how I had it configured underwater. I had it just like this. I'm going to put the screws in there, hold it in place. Just let me attach the stainless steel screws here. Make sure you have all four screws on. Should be two on each elbow connection. So in this case, since it's so close to the surface, I'm just going to use this elbow. I'm going to put this threaded piece on. If you're putting the fittings together, you want to make sure you push it all the way in so that it's all the way pushed in. Otherwise it won't lock properly. Okay, now connect the pool skim to the wall adapter and go ahead and drop the hat into it. Okay, it looks like it's good. Inside the bag with the screws, it came with two reducers here. You may want to insert one of these in one of the other return jets if you have more than one return line. They also sell eyeballs that are already made that are restricted. I'm going to go ahead and use this one. You can order some of these. You can also get these slotted return jets. They're also a great option. If you have an automatic cleaner in your pool, there's a pin you can actually stick into the pool skim and that'll keep the cleaner hose from getting tangled onto it. If you want to stick the pin in the hole furthest from the wall, let's go ahead. Okay, so you want to carefully slide the pin through. Put this end on top. Put it back on. This bumper will keep the pool cleaner hose from going around the pool skim and getting tangled. 